These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Um, can we do the anti-differentiation of 5 over 2 minus 3x? Sounds like fun. Tell me the function again, please. The, the, the integrative of 5, five over 2 minus 3x. Like this? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, any ideas about how you might start on that? Excuse me? Oh, take out the five. No. That's not a bad start. So you were suggesting. Oh, actually, no, mm -hmm. you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. five, just, yeah, separate it like five times one over two minus three x. So we know that we can take a constant um, out of the integral here. Yeah. I think that's a good step. to take this constant out, good. And then you know that one over something would be an ln. Right. So the ln of two minus three x. Okay, good. Times something else. Ta yeah. Right. Um, this is where we all Times, oh, times, here I'll tell you the one. Okay, we don't, we got one of the questions we want to ask you times is two x minus three halves x squared. I know what it's supposed to be times by, but I don't get why. It's negative a third, right? Yeah, I think that would work. That's but right. I don't get. I, we just we just a teacher just went over this and we don't get it. Okay. Is is this an example of anti differentiation with chain rule in it? Yes. That's what we don't get. Oh yeah, we don't understand. We don't either. understand. Okay. We understand chain rule, we just don't get with the kind of differentiation. Right. So what we can do here is take a guess as to what the answer is. So let's forget about the five for a second. We get the ln part, though. By the way, we should remember to put in the absolute value signs here yeah, okay. uh, for the ln. So, um, is it bad if I always put it? Is there ever a time where I, it's like wrong to put it? Wrong to put absolute value signs in? Yeah. I don't suppose, they're not always necessary, but I suppose they would never be wrong like because if you're taking the log in the first place, this must be a positive number. You can't take the log of a negative number. So, um, yeah, there's sometimes when it's not necessary. If you already know this number is positive, it's not necessary to put in the absolute value signs, but it's not, it doesn't change anything. So, yeah, if you want to be on the safe side, you can always put them in. Okay. That's right. right yeah. You could always put them in to be on the safe side. All right, now let's test whether this is correct. Well, we're, t um, we're guessing whether this is the antiderivative of this. Well, well because we know there's something else, we just don't know how to figure out what the other else is. Okay. So if we took this derivative, what would the derivative of this be? Um, one, over one over two, two minus three x. Three x times, times three. three. Negative three? Times negative three. Times negative three. Yeah. That's right. So that proves that so far this isn't right, because the derivative of this is not this. Right. So what I have to do is transform this so it looks like this. Well, I could, I could multiply this by 1 over negative 3. But the only reason, you, you're only allowed to multiply one side by 1 over negative 3 if you multiply the other side. 
I, 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 get, I get it when we like. When you do all that. But when you when do all do that, that, but is there like a way to just say, look at that and say, do you know what I mean? Like we just did it by taking that and then trying to take the derivative of it to, to figure out even 10 by negative three, they right. to divide by negative a third. Right. Is there a way to just look at the original problem and then know? Just kind of a shortcut. Yeah. Okay. I think this is a, a good method that's easy to remember and uh, is kind of intuitive, but let's think about what uh, the shortcut here would be. So, I guess we should just do the derivative after and see what we have to do. Hey, there's a shortcut. I don't remember what the formula for that is, but they should have it in your book under uh, anti-derivative chain rules. So let's look that up. <laughs> Like, how did you know that it was 10 to negative a third? Could you just I did it? this in my head. Oh, okay. That's how I did this. Okay. Um, okay so, uh, I, I, first of all, I know that it's going to have this in it. And I say to myself that if I just take the derivative of this, I'll have a negative 3. Um, and therefore, um, I need to get rid of that by 1 over negative 3. Okay, so this is fine. This, uh, we get this. Yeah, we got this. Here, can we see this one now? Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so I guess this is the general formula for using yeah. the chain rule for anti-differentiation. So again, what we have here is we're taking the antiderivative of a composite function. There's a composite function here. What are the two functions? Well, our outside function was just 1 over u. And the inside function was 2 minus 3x. Uh, so here's the mechanical way for doing that. First of all, you just take the antiderivative of the outside function. So the antiderivative of 1 over u, we know, is just the logarithm. Right. And of course, when we take that logarithm, we evaluate it at the inside function. So we plugged in the inside function here. So this is evaluated at the inside function. Uh, so that's what gave us this. Uh, and then you calculate the derivative of the inside and divide by that. Well, the derivative of the inside here, the derivative of the inside was negative 3. That's how we know to divide this by negative 3. And that's the same answer we got over here? OK. All right, so here's the mechanical approach for the chain rule for anti-differentiation. Again, it really helps oh, to. Oh, that makes sense. Oh. OK, that yeah. just made a lot of sense. Yeah, that just Thank made you. a lot of sense. All right. And, uh, and the reason you're dividing by the derivative is just to cancel out the derivative when you go forward. We kind of proved this formula when we did it this way. Um, so one thing I would really recommend if you have trouble with these is do what I'm doing and actually write down the outside and inside functions off to the side so okay. that they're clear in your mind about what they are. Uh, and then you can take their derivatives uh, separately. So the derivative of the outside here was the log, evaluated at the inside function, and the derivative of the inside was negative 3, and the formula tells us to divide by that. So here's the general formula you're asking for. This is called the chain rule for anti-differentiation. <laughs> 